But I think technology, as you all mentioned, is, is definitely more now. It's not going to go away. People are using it. And I think it's important from both perspectives so that people understand there's a doctor perspective. We worry about uh, interpretation of information. Uh, I don't want to scare people. I also want to give information quickly, but I also have to protect my patient's information from other people, mm -hmm. and even from themselves. So that, that's kind of an interesting discussion. So we'll probably want to talk about this in another year or so and see where the technology is. So these are the things I have to think about, mm. then about somebody watching over your shoulder. You know, there's some tests, okay, this is, this is embarrassing for some people. We're doing STD testing for somebody's wife, and it wasn't with a husband. That has to be very carefully controlled. Because what if, you know, the history is on the computer? What if she prints it out? So this is important stuff. Well, and how much education am I going to need to be able to interpret those results? That's the my other My cholesterol question. was okay, but my other levels were a little off. Mm -hmm. So I so looked at it, it and helping? thought I was good. Is it not? <laughs> so it almost sounds like if it's straightforward, you know, everybody knows last year you were 250 on your cholesterol, this year is 205, excellent, you move in the right direction, that's fine. But the interpretation is, is somewhat difficult. I mean, that's why I went to med school, to interpret it, not just to get a result. So what I tend to do, just so everybody knows what I do, there is a little checkbox on our report that says patient may have results. So for the right person, if they're really stressed and I'm going to be out of town and they need it Saturday, that's fine. You know, I'll put a check. But I do the education beforehand. Mm. All right, so we talked about that technology. Um, back to the scheduling yourself in, would that be helpful? See, I don't even like to schedule my oil changes online. <laughs> I don't trust that someone across town hasn't logged in and we're at the same moment scheduling the same appointment and I'm not going to get mine or they're not going to get theirs. Yeah. And that I, I want to know if that appointment really is mine. Here's something funny. You, you know, I'm, I'm giving you some secrets about being doctor here today. but. Um, we have some people that cannot meet, okay? So the ex-wife and the new girlfriend, okay. if they're in that same waiting room, we're going to have a fight. And so like two weeks ago, a guy shows up. He made the big mistake of saying, I recognize you. And I was like being really quiet, like, shh. You yeah. know, that's because you came in with your other girlfriend who was pregnant five years ago. <laughs> so, but anyway, the point there is we have to be careful because it's not just a simple scheduling. Mm -hmm. and you might say you need 20 minutes for, a, I don't know, split ends on your hair, and I know it only takes five, or vice versa. I kind of know some people. Here's another example. Um, we have one lady. She's very notorious. She's always one hour late. Always one hour late. So we schedule an hour earlier, and she comes in right on time. <laughs> but we know that. And so we have people the opposite. If you schedule them for two, they'll be there at quarter to two. Mm -hmm. Right? So... It's very interesting. So, personally, I like the idea, but I'm not sure it would work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could do a test run. <clears throat> I would certainly love it. <laughs> yeah. I, I would love it. I mean, if I could just see your available times, and that would take away a ton of manual labor on your staff's yeah. side as well. Now, let me flip it around. Again, I'm talking from the doctor's perspective, right? I'm trying to turn the tables. What if you see that your doctor has too many openings? Uh -huh. It's like, is she or he not working? You know. Well, that's a good. That's good for us to to know. I mean, well, I, I don't know. I, well, <laughs> I knowing your schedule, it's incredibly hard to get in. You know, I'm with sorry. Some, not, <laughs> I mean, within a week, if you right. unless it's an emergency. Um, so you shouldn't have any worries about that because you're. But pretty you have to think out. about it from the doctor's perspective. Well, you know? maybe that doctor should be thinking about his or her. Practice. <laughs> I I think it's um, I think some doctors try to keep uh, some privacy. Like there's some physicians in town. If they're up all night delivering babies. The next day they're not going to want to do a lot. But that's hard to explain. If you yeah. look at his his or her schedule and it says, oh we've got 20 openings. You know that looks terrible. In my mind. But if you know the story, no, he's trying to do less because he doesn't want to overwork. He's been up all night potentially. So, so again, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the input from you as the consumers, but I'm showing you from the doctor's perspective, there's other things that are concerning. 
So let's see, what other technology things um, that we see? Oh, here's a funny story. Tell me if you think this is appropriate. I was running a little behind one day, and I got a text message saying, when are you going to see me? I'm sitting in your waiting room. <laughs> so that, that was funny. She was pretty funny. All right, so technology. <laughs> let's talk about rating systems, because this is, this is getting to be more popular. You type in somebody's name, and you know the doctor's name, the provider, the nurse practitioner comes up, and it says, you know, worst pay, worst possible provider. She's terrible. She. Da, da, da. I would. I I think it's not fair to the provider, unless there's some kind of way of controlling it. But do people understand that when they read how terrible this one person is? I. I agree with you because rating systems are not always accurate because the first person who's going to throw out a rating mm -hmm. is a disgruntled person, most likely. I've seen that mm -hmm. with other trade mm -hmm. people when you look at their ratings. Good point. Um, mm -hmm. So you're not, you know, when you have satisfied patients, they're not always going to go and find you to rate you mm -hmm. to give you the positive rating yep. that you should. The numbers are, you know, nine negative to four positive. If you're happy, you'll tell four, but if you're unhappy, you'll tell nine. I've heard different numbers, but that's pretty close. Well, and it doesn't have to be about you as a doctor. It can be what's happening in their life. Mm -hmm. If they got the diagnosis they didn't like, it's your fault. Okay. Or if they stubbed their toe on the way in. So uh, is, there any, is there any benefit to these online ratings? I think so. I, I use them all the time for different things, buying products. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I want to see if something's safe for my son, a toy, or, or what people have thought of it. And I've used it, I've used it that way. And if you times. see some negatives, well, let's first start with the negatives. If you see something negative, you know, would that change your mind if there is a lot of positives? No. Not so at all. you would be able to interpret that. I think it would depend on what it was. If it right. was something very specific, um, you know, if it says, oh, this person's a terrible doctor, mm -hmm. I might go, oh, yeah, well, maybe that person's a terrible patient. Yeah. But um, if it was something very specific, like this doctor, I don't know, overcharged right. me for something that I didn't need to have done. Okay, so or you're able like to that. interpret that. I think so. Okay, that's good because uh, they're trying to improve the validity of, this, of these ratings. Uh, for example, I worked a little bit with Angie's List. I wrote him an article. Um, they rate physicians now and dentists, and you have to be a member to get on and, and be able to rate. So if you're just somebody who's got an issue and never even came to that provider, you can't write that. In Blue Cross, I'm, I'm on the Blue Cross thing, and they're telling me I've got all these wonderful reviews. Well, you can't write a review unless you've been seen and you got an, a, a paper saying you've been to that physician within 30 days or something. So that is a lot more valid, because you could be disgruntled, not even a patient. Mm -hmm. You could just run around, pretend to be, you know, Susie Q, and say, oh, terrible, you know, whatever. Mm. So I, I, I would like to also get your input about how a doctor can rebut. You know, somebody says something terrible. I'll give an example. This happened to me. Patient, uh, it was, a patient was really complaining about back pain and died. Well, I didn't see anybody for back pain who died with back surgery or back. I don't even do back surgery, but it came up. So how do I, how am I supposed to respond? Does uh, it make a difference? I don't know if responding is the necessary thing so much as the host of this information would be better served if they would check on the worst and best. Mm -hmm. You know, call the person or email them and say, can you give us a little more clarification? Mm -hmm. Should we... So you're trying okay. to make them valid or responsible also. Yes. Because that's hard because I don't, I don't think you can, you can totally control for everybody. Yeah. There's too much information out there. But it would be nice. Here's another example which I, I still laugh about. I got a letter saying that I had did too many thumb amputations <laughs> and that I have to be careful because, you know, I'm overcharging. And it's like I've never done a thumb amputation, not even my own, by mistake. <laughs> and so there's this misinformation out there, and there's, it's hard to fix. Right. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to fix because you know it's wrong. I got another one, just one last example, that my patient's prostate was pushing on her bladder. Well, none of my patients have <laughs> prostate. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's very, very difficult because, you know, from a provider, I want to present, you know, honest, fair stuff. 
but I also want to be able to respond when it's not fair. And so this prostate thing, this thumb thing, that's not fair. Uh, well, and being mm -hmm. able to put a statement from you, regardless mm -hmm. what is found, mm -hmm. if the site is responsible and checks out. It would be nice if the site were responsible, but the other thing is how do you track it? Mm -hmm. I, I don't have staff time enough right. to check every single minutia, you know, rating scale, doctor rate this and whatever. So it, I'm, I'm actually pleased to hear it, and physicians who are listening, I'm pleased to hear that you know, everybody here at least understands it's not a perfect system, there's some responsibility and, and read between the lines, I guess. Because that's a big fear for physicians. In fact, there's uh, courses and insurances how to protect yourself online. Because we think it's going to be a devastating thing, but it sounds like I don't have to worry because people understand. Yeah, I think consumers are pretty savvy with with knowing that anybody can put up any mm -hmm. piece of information on the internet at any time. And so you just have to be really weary and understand mm -hmm. what the content is and if there's any issues you call your doctor. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that's nice to hear because again we we can't control everything. We're not going to keep everybody happy. That's not even the intent. Right. The intent is to give good, give, give good care and Sometimes outcomes are not as good as you'd like them to be. On the other hand, I think there's some real important information. If everybody says this physician is wonderful and you know does the best, you know whatever top toenail procedure, it's like there might be some validity to it. Yeah, Something you want to go with the consensus of ratings that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. If more people are saying the same thing over and over again, probably. then that one disgruntled person is probably having other issues too. Okay. Well, that's great. So, that's so we talked a little bit tonight about technology and you know, obviously you four are sophisticated technological technolo technology uh, with your hands. <laughs> and so, you know, there's some of my patients are not quite as good because, you know, they're an older population or, you know, they don't, they don't have the right equipment, they didn't brought they weren't brought up with it, etc. But I think technology as you all mentioned is, is definitely more now, it's not going to go away, people are using it, and I think it's important from both perspectives so that people understand there's a doctor perspective, we worry about uh, interpretation of information, uh, I don't want to scare people, I also want to give information quickly, but I also have to protect my patient's information from other people. And even from themselves. So that, that's kind of an interesting discussion. So we'll probably want to talk about this in another year or so and see where the technology is then. So this is The Doctor is Listening. And my name is Dr. Daniel Laurie, and I appreciate you all listening in tonight. Please feel free to let me know if there's other topics you want to talk about. These topics are picked because people approach me and say, you know, tell me about such and such and I heard about this new thing and and that's what this show is about it's all about education bringing information out so you you people who are listening can really make the best choice for your own health care so I appreciate listening thank you that was good <laughs>